Hello everyone, welcome to another front-end mentor challenge. So today we are going to do our third challenge, which is this intro sign-up form. Actually, with this section, as you can see that this is a fully responsive design. And also you can see that we added the validation for this form whenever there is an error as you can see we will face it with a message and also we will show an icon here but whenever the value is perfect we will remove the error as you can see so we will learn how we can add validation to our form in this video also hope you guys will like it if you are new to my channel please do subscribe if you want to see more video like this one and no more talk let's dive into the video So here as you can see that I am in front end mentor and here as you can see this is the third one which we will do for this video. So intro component with sign up form. So this is the one and previously we did these two challenges if you did not watch this video and if you are interested to watch these challenges you can find the link in the description for all front end mentor challenge where you will find these two and today we are going to make this third one so let's go to here and here you can see that this is the third design and also the mobile design will be like that so that's fine what we will do and let's download this so you can download it by clicking this button it is very simple and when you download it this challenges file you will find this file which is this one into component with sign up form so let's extract this file and here it is and this is the extracted file so let me delete this and if you open this you can find all the file necessary file as you can see so we need to open it with our code editor so let's open our visual studio code here and just drag and drop and it will open this file in our visual studio code so perfect as you can see so let me open it and here as you can see all the design which is this one this is the active design this is the desktop this is the desktop preview and this is the mobile design and also you can see that we used some images here in the background and this icon you will also find these images and icon in this image file if you open it as you can see we have this background image which we will use in this background uh, okay and also you can see that we have this favicon and this is the favicon and also you have this icon error so all the images and all the file is ready to start this challenge and that's it so let's open this html file and here as you can see that this is the html file already and also if you can notice that we have the text which we need to use in this project or in this challenge and also we have this style guide where you can find all the color all the font and as you can see that we need to use poppins so we can find all the necessary thing here for the style in this style guide so let's come to our html file and open it with our live server and here it is as you can see that this is all the just text so let's do the challenge so let's start the challenge here so let me open the design so this is the mobile and this is the desktop so we will use the mobile design because we are designing the mobile design first so first of all we will design the mobile design and here if you can see that this is the mobile design which we need to make so if you can see the design so we can separate this whole design into two parts first one is the left and second one is the right part in the left part we can see that we have this text which is we can use h1 and this is the paragraph and for the second part for which is the right part 
we have this top box here as you can see and also we have this form so this is how we will separate these things so in our HTML let's create a section first and in this section we will have a ID which will be intro and in this section we will have a div with a class of container and in this container we will have two div first one is the left column so left call and the second one is the right column so that's at the layout so in the left column we will have our this h1 so let's create h1 and paste the text inside this h1 and also we need to paste this paragraph so let's cut it and after this h1 we will create this paragraph and paste the text inside the paragraph so this is the left layout and we also need the right side of the layout so for the right side we have this top box so let's create a div with a class of top box in the right column so div with a class of top box or something like that and in this top box we have this paragraph so also if you notice that we have this separate style which is the try it free seven days which is bold and we have this separate style so we need to make sure about that so if i come here and let's grab this whole text and make a paragraph and inside this paragraph just paste it and for this bold text we can wrap this text with the span so try it for free in seven days so cut it and create a span and paste it inside the span so we can use or you can give a separate style to this span so perfect so after that we have this form as you can see so let's create a form so after this top box div let's create another div with a class of form container and in this form container we will have our form so let's create the form and for the action let's use hash and in this form let's create a div and let's give it a class of field group and for the first field we will use our input and if i come here as you can see that this is the first name actually so let's come here and say that the placeholder will be the first name we can copy this text and also let's create a label for it so label for first name and let's say that the label will be first name oh my god i can't spell and also come here and let's give it the id of first name first name and also let's give it and also let's give it a name property which will be also the first name so perfect this is for the level and also if you can see that here if i open the active status here as you can see that whenever we will face an error we will have this icon in the field and also we will have this text so for those thing we will need to add our image which is the icon so let's add this image inside this field group so the source will be this image and we will have this icon error and let's give it a class error icon and here as you can see that the alternative so let's give it an img or error img so after that let's also create the paragraph which will have a class of error text so for the paragraph 
if I come here as you can see we have this first name cannot be empty so let's give it the text first name cannot be empty and that's it if I save as you can see that this is our first name and this is our placeholder and this is the icon and this is the text for the error and for the initial state we will hide this img and paragraph but whenever we will face an error we will show them so after that let's create another field so we can copy the whole field group for the second one we will use last name and also here and for the placeholder also we will use last name so perfect so for the error we also can say that last name cannot be empty so that's it so also let's create the third one which is actually if I come as you can see that this is the email so for the email we can say that for email and the label will be the email and for the type it will be an email and for the id email also and for the name email so that's it and also the placeholder will be the email address i think yes this is the email address and for the error handling we will use this text which is the look like it is not an email so let's give it here looks like this is not an email so perfect and we will have this last one which is actually the password so for the password the level will be the password and the type will be also password and the email will be the password and the name same password and the placeholder will be the password with a capital P and for the last thing we can say that the password cannot be empty password cannot be empty so that's it all the, our HTML so and also if you can see that we have this button and we have this text so for the button after this div let's create a button and we will have a type of submit and let's say that for the text we will use this and also after that we will have a paragraph which is this paragraph as you can see this is the paragraph and we will have a class here so that we can style it so form footer and let's copy this text and paste it here and that's it if i come here as you can see that all the thing is looking good and if you can see that in the text we have this part which have a separate style so we need to make sure about the span we need to wrap it with a span so term and services this two word will span and we will wrap it with the span so that's it now we can delete this text and as you can see that this is the all HTML content that we will need to use so perfect so let's style our content so let's create the style.css maybe here style.css and link it with our HTML file maybe here link css and this is the link and here first of all let's remove all the gap here so padding will be zero and margin will be zero and box 
sizing will be the border box and as you can see that we don't have the extra gap and the next thing as you can see that we need to use poppins font so let's grab this font so let me copy this poppins and open it with a new tab and we need to use 400 500 600 and 700 so 4 5 6 7 4 5 6 and this 7 and come here in the embed and import let's copy this import and paste it in the top of the file so we can use the poppins font now so looking good so for the first thing what we need to do is we need to hide this icon and this error text so let's say that error text and also the error icon will display none for now so as you can see that we don't have sorry so as you can see that we don't have any icon or also we don't have this text so we will style it later so first of all let's come to our HTML and give the font size of 16 pixel not PC pixel and the font family will be the poppins So poppins and also the sans serif for the fallback font family so perfect so let's come to our intro and let's say that min height will be min height will be 100 vh and also say that width will be 100 percent and also say that display flex and align items will be center and justify content will be also center and as you can see that we have this mistake align items that will be and you can see that now our content is now in center and also let's use a background image so background image will be so we are designing the mobile design first so for the mobile design we have a separate background image if you can see background intro mobile so we will this one for the image for the background and background color will be we will have this red color if i come to our style guide you can see that we have this red color copy this color code and paste it here so this is the one so perfect and also let's have a padding in the top and bottom 100 pixel so after that let's come to container and here let's say that display will be flex and align items will be center and justify content will be center and here as you can see that this layout is taking place but if you can notice that we are designing the mobile design first and here in the mobile design we will need to make it in the column so let's come here and say that flex direction will be the column and here as you can see that now it is in column position perfect and also make sure the text alignment will be the center and padding will be let's say that we will have 30 pixel padding as you can see so also let's give it a max width of something like 1300 pixel and let's also make this in the center whenever we will have this max width so we can say that margin 0 auto so this will take care about the center perfect so after that let's come to our left column left column and here let's say that we will have this flex one and also for the right column flex one so this will make sure that whenever we will have the text of view we will have this equal width for the left and right 
so after that let's give it margin in the bottom of our left column so that we have some room here so margin bottom maybe something like 50 pixel so as you can see that we have some separate or we have some gap here from this left column so perfect let's style the left column h1 and let's say that the color will be the white and font size will be about 2.5 rem and line height will be about 3 rem and also give it margin bottom of something like 2 rem and here as you can see that we have this h1 styled perfectly and let's style the preg graph now so instead of this h1 let's use preg graph the color will be also the white and font size will be about 1.3 rem good and make some line height 1.9 rem maybe good also we can i think decrease the font size something like 1.2 good looking good maybe this one will look better so that's looking good as you can see this is the preg graph and that's looking perfect i think we should use something like 20 pixel instead of 2rm or maybe 15 pixel so that we have this kind of gap here so 15 pixel will work perfectly as you can see so that's good so after that let's style our top card which is this one as you can see so in t is in the right column so right column we have a top box i believe so let me check it once again yeah we have this top box class and here let's say that we'll have a background color so this is the bluish background color as you can see so let's copy this bluish color and looking good also say that color will be the white and padding we'll have a padding of about 15 pixel and also about 19 pixel for the left and right sorry so this is looking good as you can see perfect and also let's give it a border radius of about 15 pixel and box shadow we will have a box shadow because if you can notice that here where it is here we have this box shadow you can see so let's copy the box shadow from the reference code where it is yeah this is the one box shadow copy and paste it here so as you can see that we have this box shadow little box shadow here so this is the box shadow after that we will have a margin bottom so that we can some space in the bottom 13 pixel will work as you can see so after that let's style our this preg graph so maybe in the box we have this preg graph and let's say that font size will be about 1.3 rem and line height will be about 2.2 rem so looking good as you can see that and also what i can need to do is i need to make sure about this as you can see we need to make this bold so what i can do is i can say that in this spread graph we we have this span we will make the font weight bold let's say that's 700 so as you can see that only this text is bold and rest of the text is perfectly thin so after that let's come here into our actual form so let's style our form container so right column and form container and here let's say that background color will be white so we will have this white background color and also let's say that padding will be 30 pixel and 
border radius will be 15 pixel and also if you can see that we will have the same box shadow here so we can copy this box shadow from this top box and paste it here so as you can see that we also have this box shadow in the bottom so after that let's come to our fill group So here let's say that position will be relative and margin bottom let's give it 25 pixel so as you can see that now we have 25 pixel gap for the each item so perfect and after that let's hide our level so we do not need any level here so inside this right column if we have any level we will hide this so display none so as you can see that we don't have any level anymore so after that let's style our input so in the right column we will have this input and say that the width will be about 100 percent and now as you can see we have 100 percent width so height will be about let's say that 60 pixel and margin bottom will be about let's give it margin bottom of 5 pixel so looking good as you can see here and also let's give it a border radius of about 5 pixel I think we need more maybe 10 pixel looking good or 8 pixel hmm okay and also let's say that border so the border will be 1.3 pixel solid and for the border we will have this grayish color i think if i come here yes as you can see that we have this grayish color so we can do this let's grab this color and paste it here so as you can see that this is the grayish color looking good and also let's say that padding left will be 20 pixel and outline will be none and let's say that color will be we will have this color which is this one and paste it here so looking good so also say that font family will be Montserrat sorry Poppins and also say that font size will be about 1.1 rem and font weight will be 600 maybe something like that as you can see this looking good and perfect so after that let's come to our this submit button so if you can notice that the submit button is also having the same style height and width as same as our field which is this input so what we can do is we can also apply this style for the submit button so right column input not input it will be button which will have a type of submit now as you can see that this submit button is having this and if you want we can give it some extra style so for the border let's see that the border will be none or zero so as you can see that we don't have any border but we will have a background color if i come to our style guide here as you can see that we have this green color so let's copy this green color and paste it here so it is looking fine and also say that color will be white and we will have a box shadow so the box shadow will be something like zero pixel for pixel and it will be the same as this one or we need to make it a little bit of darker so it will be something like that as you can see that so perfect so after that let's change the font the font went will be 500 
and font size will be 1.3 rem and text transform will be uppercase and letter spacing will be about 2 pixel and we will not have any margin bottom and we will not also have the border so perfect as you can see that it is looking good and the last thing is if you can see that whenever we will focus as you can see we have this border so let's come here in the input so let's say that whenever we will focus this input we will change the border with let's say that it will be something like so as you can see that whenever i hover it is looking good perfect so after that let's also give a hover statement in our button because if i come to our active if you can see that whenever i will hover this button we have this button background color changed so in here let's say that in the submit button whenever we will hover it we will change the background color and we will make it lighter so maybe something like this so as you can see that looking similar so this is looking good and what i need to do is i need to make sure about this placeholder so let's style this placeholder and let's say that right column input we will have this placeholder and let's style this the color will be the gray color or this dark color let me copy and paste it here and let's say that font size will be about 1.1 rem and also let's say that font weight will be 600 and font family will be poppins so as you can see that this is looking good perfect the last thing what we need is we need to style this footer text so let's come to the footer text so right column and form footer and say that margin top will be about something like 10 pixel and we will have a color which is actually this grayish color so let me copy this grayish color so it is looking good as you can see and the last thing if i come here as you can see we need to make this term and services red so for that we wrapped those word into a span so we can say that the span color will be this red color if i come here and grab this red color paste it here as you can see we have this also we need to make sure about the font weight will be 700 so as you can see that it is looking perfect so all of our design is finished so the last thing what we need is we need to display this arrow text and arrow icon so maybe here in the end of this style let's open our arrow icon and let's say that display will be block so that we can style it so this is the arrow icon as you can see so what i need to do is i need to position it absolute so and also say that top will be zero and also say that right will be zero so this is now in the right side so maybe from the right 20 pixel and also from the top let's say that 28 percent which will make it center as you can see this is perfectly in placed so also let's style this text which is the arrow text and let's say that display block and here as you can see that this is the arrow text text align will be the right side and also we need to make sure 
and also font size will be let's give it 0.8 rem and font style will be italic and color will be red color which is this one so as you can see that this is the text maybe we can increase the font weight 500 so looking good as you can see this is the error text and this is the error icon and for the initial state we will hide it so let's remove this display block so it will hide it and the next thing is we need to make it for our desktop so let's make the media query so design it for the desktop media only screen and menu width maybe 1000 pixel and here let's say that first of all for the container what I need is I need to change the flex direction from the column to row so it will create this layout as you can see and the second thing we need to change the background image actually background image URL because we have a separate image for our desktop if you can see here desktop design so this is will be the desktop sorry this is not in the design it is in the actually image so intro desktop so as you can see that this is the desktop image as you can see in the bottom sorry I think we should give it in the intro not here so let's remove it from here and give it in the intro yeah it is looking so yeah it should be in the intro instead of this container so after this let's go to our left column and say that text alignment will be the left here as you can see in the text alignment is left now and also give it a margin not margin padding right 50 pixel so we will have some padding here and also let's increase the left h1 left column h1 and maybe font size will be like 3 rem and line height will be about 3.5 rem so looking good as you can see this is the text and also let's say that the paragraph will be font size of about let's say that 1.1 rem good looking fine so after that let's come to our right column and here let's say that give it a max width of about 500 pixel so as you can see that this is the max width of 500 pixel and if you can see that we have this problem so make sure that after this by we have a breakpoint here so line break actually so in our left here we have this after this by we have this break line break so as you can see that we have now this looking good so the next thing what I need to do is I need to make sure about this text which is in the which is in the top box so right column top box paragraph so here let's say that font size will be about 1.1 rem looking good and also we will have the padding about 20 pixel so perfect as you can see and also come here for our form container so right column form container 
and say that padding will be about 40 pixel and look good looking good and after that let's also give some style to my input and placeholder so right column input and also the placeholder in the input and let's say that font size will be about 1.05 ram so maybe in the right column the form photo we will say that the margin top will be 20 pixel and font size will be about 0.7 ram so looking good as you can see that this is the text okay perfect as you can see so the design is complete now and it is fully responsive as you can see so perfect and the next thing what we need to do is we need to make sure about the validation so here first of all in our file let's get a, another file which will be the JS file so main.js So let's also link this JS file in the HTML file. Maybe this here. So script and here source will be the main.js. So here let's say that first of all we will grab the form here. So constant form equals to document dot query selector and it is in the red column and we have this form and also we will have the input so input so in the form we have some input here so actually it will be the all input so we will have this query selector all and let's name it inputs actually so let's say that whenever someone submit the form so form and add event listener we will add the event listener which is the submit event so whenever someone submit this form it will fire this function where we can say that first of all let's prevent the default behavior so e dot prevent default so it will prevent the default behavior which is redirecting us to the another page or redirecting us to another way so this will prevent this and here so after that what we need to do is maybe say that after we submitted this form we need to get our value for each input so let's say that inputs for each so we will loop for every input and let's do it and in every input we will console lock the input for now let's say that input dot the value so what it will do is whenever I will submit this form so it will console log the value for every input as you can see and if you can notice that for the button we missed something here into the button where the button okay here let's say that the cursor will be the pointer so we have this feeling now that we can click it so let's open our console log here the console panel as you can see that we have a problem here which is okay if you can see that we have a mistake here it will be capital a and after that we will use lowercase l so that's looking fine so open our console log so as you can see that we don't have any error and and we will submit this button so let's say that whenever we will submit it as you can see that we have four console log but we don't have anything because we don't have any field value here so let's give it a field value here 
and whenever we will submit as you can see that it is not submitting because in the HTML5 we have this little variation here so let's give it something like that and here whenever we will submit it as you can see that we have this for console log which is the value of each input so perfect so let's say that whenever there will be any kind of input we will let it go but whenever the input value is empty we will show an error basically this is what we need to do in our active status as you can see that here it is saying that the first name cannot be empty so we need to check that it should have value so let's say that if the input dot value means whenever there will be an value so let me check the opposite one so whenever there will be no value let's say that the input dot parent element dot class list dot add we will add a class which is the error class as you can see so which is actually if I open it in our inspect as you can see that this is the input this is the input and this is the parent value of this input which is this field group so whenever there will be an error means whenever the field will be the empty we will add a class in this field group so let's say that we will have a first name we will not have a last name and we will have an email so let's give it an email something like that and we will have a password and whenever I will click the submit button and open my inspect and in the element if I go to the right column in the form container in the form as you can see that for the second one which is the last name which we don't have any last name we have a class here which is an error so this is what we need to do whenever we will have an empty field it will add a class which is an error so as you can see but else what we need to do is whenever there will be an value we need to remove this class so copy this and paste it here and instead of adding let's say that remove so it will remove it whenever we will have a valid or we will have a name or we will have a value in this input so perfect and what I need to do is I need to make sure about here so as you can see that we have now this display none but let's say that whenever I will have a class of error in our field so let's say that group field or field group whenever I will have an error So whenever I will have an error class in this div, I want to display the block in the error text and also the error icon. So for the error icon and for the error text, what I will do is I will say that display will be block whenever there will be an error in our group field. So that's basically what we need to do. So let's test it. So we don't have any value for the four of our input. So whenever I will click the submit button, as you can see that we have four error here. So let's say that I have a first name. And here, as you can see that the error is removed from here. And let's say that I have a last name. Also, the error is removed. And but whenever I will have an email, something like that it's also removed because for the HTML5 the validation is okay but we can see that this is not a actual email so we need to validate this email separately so for now it is okay so let's say that password we have a password so there is no error so whenever we will have an empty field we will have this whenever there is an error we have a border change here the border color is now red and it is something like 2 pixel so in our standard CSS so let's say that when we have an error we have an error in the input what I need to do is I need to change the border which will be 2 pixel solid and the red color which is this one so copy this color and paste it here save it so as you can see that when we have an error we have the border which is red but whenever we have an valid 
as you can see that the border is now the default one so now let's come to our email so so let's say that after this if else means whenever we will have an error here we will add this but whenever we don't have error then we will check it once again for the only of our email field so let's say that the input dot type if the input type is equal email means the input is only email then we will check it say that we will check it with an regex so for the email validation if you can here search for say that email validation with regex and here if you come to this one which is the stock overflow and from here we have this function so we can copy this so there are so many way you can do so I will do it in this way so you can copy this regex function and paste it maybe here so if you can see that in this function we have a function name which is the valid eight email and it will take an email as a parameter and it will check it with the regex which is this one and it will return us something however there is an error so let's say that so here in the if else statement whenever the type of our input is email so we will call this function so validate email so here in the parameter we need to pass our email so for the email we can say that input dot value so it will return us something so what it will do is it will return true or false let's say that it will return us true if there is no error and if there is an error it will return us false so we can add a if else statement say that whenever it will return us a true we don't have an error so we can remove the input from here but else if have an error we can say that we will add this error function sorry error class so let me recap once again as you can see here so here is our if else statement where we are checking for the value if there is any value we are saying that we are removing this error but if there is no value we are adding an error here so that's fine but for the only email saying that here for the only email we are checking the email validation here and in email validation actually we are taking a if else statement where we are calling this function which checking an email and return us something if there is any validate error so it is taking this email which is this email dot sorry input dot value so it will return us true if there is no error but if there is an error it will return false so in the else what we are doing is whenever is there is any validate error we are adding this error class that's fine so let's come here and test it out so we have this last name first name we have this error uh, which is this email which is not a valid email so let's say that and it is working fine as you can see looks like it is not an error sorry looks like it's not an email but if i give it a valid email as you can see we have perfectly passed the email as you can see so that's it for this video i think you learned something new as you can see so if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe my channel for more video like this one and if you are practicing with this challenge or if you are taking this challenge please let me know in the comment section or you can join our facebook group link in the description join the group and and let me know if you're facing any kind of problem with the code so that's it for this video. My name is Arfan and I will see you in the next video. Till then bye bye. Kudahafes.